this event is going to be next level preparation to prevent piss poor performance. Let's pack the bag. As you know from my previous rucking video I made three months ago now, I have signed up to the fan dance in July. The fan dance is a grueling 24K SAS selection test march over Penny Fan, the highest mountain in the Brecon Beacons. The infamous march is the world's oldest special forces test and is used as the first major indicator of whether a candidate has the physical and mental aptitude to complete the legendary SAS selection course. The fan dance is a 24K soldiering time trial with weight staged across the highest peak in the formidable Brecon Beacon. So it's not a small challenge. To compete, and most importantly complete, this really hard challenge, I will need to carry 45 pound fully loaded Bergen or backpack across 24K of technically tough terrain over the Brecon Beacons, up and over Penny Fan, which is over 886 meters or 2,900 feet. Not a small challenge. Since making that last video, I have learned two things. The first is that rucking is an American term. My first ever rucking challenge. So this is my first attempt at a rucking march. So I apologise to all British military vets who watched that first rucking video and commented, this is what you get when you learn about covering distance with a backpack on YouTube. I googled the term fan dance and that was it. My whole evening was lost to YouTube videos and Reddit posts about this strangely titled fan dance. Everyone on YouTube called it rucking because I was watching loads of American YouTube channels. I now know that in the UK it's called tabbing, which is short for tactical advance to battleground. To be honest, I don't mind calling it rucking or tabbing as I'm not in the military and it's blatantly evident from my other videos that I have never been in the military. So calling it tabbing feels a bit unusual considering I'm not tactically moving anywhere, especially into battle. I wouldn't and couldn't even imagine how hard it is for our military folks to have to train to be able to move at speed with these fully loaded Bergens anywhere, especially into a fight. I have too much respect to even pretend that what it is that I'm doing is anywhere near the same, because I know it isn't. What I am doing is fun, while simultaneously keeping fit and learning new skills. I will not have to fight for my life or the lives of my friends when I reach the end. I'll be lying on the floor for a very long time before removing the boot that I have to wear for this event because I can't wear my trail trainers and I'll be eating my body weight in pasta. The fan dance is a good challenge for me. If you haven't done so already, please watch my first video on this challenge. I'll link it in the description as I do go into more detail about the fan dance and its purpose. So having covered that, the second important lesson from that first tabbing attempt or rucking attempt, I'm gonna call it tabbing as running over a long way over a big mountain with a ridiculously heavy backpack, which is what I'll have to call it to encapsulate what it is that I'm actually doing will take a really long time and probably won't make for a very good thumbnail title. So the second lesson I learned from my previous tabbing attempt is that a decent backpack is essential. The one I bought off Amazon, hang on a sec, this is my Backpack 1.0. I bought a really cheap um, backpack. It's some kind of utility backpack, tactical backpack it's called. So the one I bought off Amazon wasn't fit for purpose and completely destroyed my shoulders. Even though this was advertised as ideal for rucking, it really, really isn't. So, I'm not gonna be using that anymore. I mean, it was a perfectly good backpack. It just wasn't fit for the purpose that I needed it for, which was to carry 45 pounds of weight over a long way. It just destroyed my shoulders. I wasn't that tired when I finished it and excitedly, I could have kept going. In fact, I did consider it. However, the backpack straps combined with the unwieldy dead weight destroyed my shoulders and they were killing me. The pain at the end was annoyingly bad. This footage of the bruising it caused to my shoulders immediately after I took the backpack off really doesn't do justice to how bad it got the next day and how much my shoulders hurt for the next 48 hours. Now, before anyone jumps into the comments and says that it's not gonna be easy, I am expecting discomfort doing this challenge. I've now completed several ultra marathons in some extreme heat for the UK. So I'm not adverse to discomfort, but what I don't want to do is destroy or injure myself unnecessarily 
So I have invested in a decent backpack that I saw heavily recommended online. I'm gonna show it to you in a second. It cost me a lot more than I expected to have to pay for a backpack. It cost a fortune. And it came all the way from Australia, also adding Brexit related tactics. You didn't expect a Brexit related comment on this video, did you? When, you? when you first clicked on it, let's be honest. The backpack is a Crossfire DG3 rucksack, specifically made for carrying extreme loads across long distances. And this is the first time I'm opening the box as it was only delivered yesterday. It was supposed to be delivered last week, but I had to pay the import taxes and UPS decided not to inform me that it was sitting in my local depot waiting for me to phone up and pay the outstanding fees. I'm not sure how they thought I'd know that. Anyway, I have it now. I'm gonna pack it now on camera, ready for my second ever tab this afternoon. I'm gonna go out on a long run with the backpack. In my first video and tab, I only packed two dead weights to replicate the weight I'd need for the fan dance. And I'm gonna put this in there. There we go, so nothing. <laughs> so I bought two heavy weights and put them in the backpack. <laughs> that was a lot more effort than I thought it would be. <laughs> to replicate the weight I'd need to complete this challenge because I couldn't be bothered to pack it with everything I'd actually need. The weights I actually packed were these. They're still in the boxes. I bought two, if you can see that, there you go. I bought two nine kg dead weights, which I could use to obviously weigh my backpack down. Now there were two negatives to doing it this way. The first was the backpack wasn't fit for purpose. So there weren't really any compartments for me to put this in. So it was moving around in the backpack, but also these were so heavy, they're dead. So they're all condensed into one place. So they're pulling it straight down on my back. As you can imagine, using two of these was a killer. So I'm not gonna be using these dead weights anymore. The fan dance organizers who are all ex-military have clear and defined rules that I need to follow that keeps the fan dance true to its original SAS selection process roots. And the rules are understandably very extensive. I have many of the items listed and I have ordered and many I still need to procure. So basically I've got a, hang on. So what I do have is all of my notes of everything that I have and everything I need to buy. That includes a few more extreme items, which I don't actually own. I have ordered the items I don't have so I should have them shortly. And then what I'll do is I'll repack the bag and do it then. But what I'm gonna do today is pack what I do have, see what it weighs, and then go with that. If I need to use dead weight, I'm gonna use water. The way I see it, and I've actually bought something to help me with hydration on the day, and I'm gonna use that today. But the way I see it is, if I'm gonna use dead weight, I may as well use dead weight rather than these heavy weights that are actually gonna be useful like water. So if something does happen to my bladder, which I bought, I bought a hydration bladder, which I'm gonna use on the day, then I've got spare water, which are gonna be in hard canisters or water bottles. I have decided to pack my Bergen now in prep for the actual event in July, so I can test it out, learn about the best way to do it, so the best way to pack it, and through my favorite way of learning, trial and error, that if I do make mistakes, which will be inevitable, then I have time to adapt and overcome. When I open the fan dance load bearing instructions and welcome email, it starts with probably the best sentence I have ever read. Prior planning and preparation prevents piss poor performance. Prior planning and preparation prevents piss poor performance. Something I need to get tattooed on me somewhere. I definitely need a t-shirt that says this. This saying is probably one of the best things I have ever heard. So with one of my new favorite sayings still ringing in my head, I'm gonna start the prep now. The planning already started several months ago when I first did that first ruck march or tab march. I learned so much from the mistakes I made on that. If nothing else, this event is gonna be one of the best prepared for ones I have ever entered into. I really don't prepare very well for any of my events. This event is gonna be next level preparation to prevent piss poor performance. Let's pack the bag. Now I've laid everything out on the table that I currently own that I'm gonna pack into the bag. The bag is in here. Um, I've only opened it to make sure that it was actually the bag that was delivered, but I haven't taken it out of the box yet. So I don't know what the bag looks like, which on hindsight, now thinking about it, I probably should have checked first, but the bag looks the real McCoy, the real deal. 
I also have my sleeping solutions, clothes, and then essentials like first aid kit, that sort of jazz, and then some things that are gonna help me with the packing. Now I should say, having read the rules and written most of them down here, I have everything I need to pack. Now the whole point of this is, this event isn't overnight. Well, I hope not anyway. The point of this is a long run up a steep mountain, down the other side, turn around and then back up the other side. And the challenge is part of the SAS selection process, which means that those soldiers wanting to join the SAS have to complete this as part of their selection process, it's part of it. They have to complete this long run with a heavy burden. They have to carry everything with them that they would need when they arrived at their destination to either fight or reconnaissance or camp out or whatever it is that soldiers do at the end of a long tab. I'm not going to pretend to know what that is, but what I am going to do is replicate what it is that they have to do as part of that selection process because it's part of the rules. Now the rules state I need to carry certain items with me and those items are extensive, but they are basically, in a nutshell, to make this easy for the video, they are everything you would need if you arrived somewhere and you had to survive overnight in an emergency situation. So in extreme conditions, heat, cold, uh, wet, if it's raining, um, temperatures change on you. If you arrive somewhere, you've got some, you've got all, everything you need to survive for a few days. It's also going to be in the middle of July, so I need to make sure I'm carrying enough water with me so I stay hydrated. I'm going to go through my list with you shortly, but the first thing I'm going to do is open the backpack. This is the backpack. And I'm gonna be completely honest with you, this looks phenomenal. Compared to what I was using before over there, this is the real deal. So this backpack is a Crossfire DG3. I've never heard of the company before, but I researched and researched and researched and having looked into it, I knew that I needed something specifically that had a plastic frame. This plastic frame is going to give my shoulders the support it needs to be able to carry this burger. Now, the weight that I need to put into it is 35 pounds of weight. So I need to put 35 pounds in here plus my water. What I've got as a solution for that is a hydration bladder. So this is the Camelback hydration bladder, which again, I did loads of research and this is by far one of the best ones. It also has a reinforced drinking tube, so that's not gonna split. If I compare this, hang on. So if I compare the bladder, you can see the tags are still on it. Let me take these off. If I compare the bladder of the Camelback, which is in here, which is easy access to fill up, there, there's where your water goes in, in here, to what I use for marathons and ultramarathons, which goes in my Solomon running vest, which you need lightweight because you want to be able to run fast. This, I worry, would, well, this wouldn't survive being in a backpack with everything else that I'm going to pack. This is going to be very robust. This has been reinforced. It even has a little tap on it if I need to turn off the flow of water. But obviously you drink it in exactly the same way by sucking on it but then I'm gonna come onto that shortly. So the first thing I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna open the backpack and I'm gonna pull everything down so it opens and I can have access to everything. The lid comes off, so I'm gonna take that lid off for now and I'm gonna open everything up. If I can work out how, I'm gonna open, yeah, here we go. So it opens up. Now. This thing has serious storage capacity. So I've brought the camera around here so I can just quickly show you inside if I can get it to focus. So this is the inside and as you can see, there are loads of different compartments in here, all the way down to the bottom. Now the thing is, it's got loads of space. And then the outside has a zip option that I can pull all the way down to open it up. So if I unzip it here, look, I, that unzips. So I can access everything in here if I need to. That undoes here, which I'm not going to do right now. But that unzips. So if I need access, 
I've got that as an option, which is going to be great. But what I am going to do is the first thing, it's a little trick that I've learned from a load of Reddit posts and tips that I've seen online. I've also read this as part of the fan dance instruction or, you know, tips and tricks of how to pack your Bergen, which is to take a bin liner. So this is a bog standard 90 litre black bag that you would use as your kitchen bin and then throw out into your wheelie bin. Um, but it's a, it's a slightly thicker one. Um, it's not the thickest one because the thicker ones were smaller capacity. So I've gone for this one, but this one is apparently tear proof. Um, but it's also waterproof. So it means that when I put this in the bag like this, I can now use this as, I can actually use this as a liner for the bag. Now the fan dance instructions actually mentioned about canoe bags. And I'm, I'm in an R in about buying canoe bags. What I might buy canoe bags for is the things like my clothes. I'm not gonna buy a massive 90 liter canoe bag because they're, you know, very expensive. And a bin liner is gonna do exactly the same. If I fall into a lake or river, completing the fan dance in the middle of July, um, or in training, then yeah, I deserve to have all my kit soaking wet. But yeah, this is gonna give me added protection. If I get caught in a downpour, if I get caught in you know, extreme conditions that are gonna need my bag to be completely waterproof, not just water resistant, which is what it is, um, then this is gonna give me some added benefits. I'm gonna put my hair up, one sec. Okay, I've put my hair up now. That makes life easier, it's not, not in my face. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pack the lightest at the bottom, but there is one thing that I saw mentioned. Now this is my sleeping bag. The last time I used this, I didn't pack this away very well. This is a winter sleeping bag. I used to use this for fishing before I turned vegan many years ago, but I now use it for sleepovers at the age of 44. I don't know how many sleep sleepovers I'm having now, but that's what my kids say. You can use it for sleepovers, dad. So I'm just gonna undo all of the straps. So I haven't put it away very well. So I'm gonna take it out of this. Now this is the bag. Now the useful thing is this is waterproof. This is a winter sleeping bag. This is not the sort of thing you would take on a tab. So obviously it being a winter, it goes down to like minus 20 degrees sleeping bag. It's like an ultra thermal sleeping bag, um, which I just don't need for this, for what it is that I'm doing. I'm not gonna find myself in sub-zero temperatures in July. Um, even if I do get caught off guard. I mean, the fan dance welcome email goes into quite extreme specifics about how people have struggled with completing the SAS selection process, even to the point of death. So as much as I respect this as a process, I don't think I need that much. And it's taken up all my bag anyway. So what I am gonna use is one of these, um, you know, hiking sleeping bags that are good for low temperatures. They still go down, not quite as good as that. So I'm gonna take it out of here and then I'm gonna use this. I'm gonna unravel it so as it's all loose. And then I'm gonna stuff that into here at the bottom. So this goes right down to the bottom. That's better, much better. There we go. So then that goes right down. I've still got this waterproof bag that I can use shortly. So then that's stuffed in there. Now the good thing about stuffing this to the bottom, I've seen others do this, other, other soldiers and you know professional hikers, so the good thing about stuffing the sleeping bag in like this at the bottom is firstly it's light. So everything that's light needs to go to the bottom of the backpack. Things that are heavy need to try and stay to the top. But I also need to combine that with access. So even though I can unzip this, I've got a black bag in there. So I need to be able to access things at the top. So I wanna combine things that I will need to be at the top along with things that are heavy to be at the top. But the advantage of having the sleeping bag at the bottom, I'm not gonna need that until the end of the day. If I do need it at all um, in an emergency, I'll have time to get things out, to get the sleeping bag out and then put things back. Which if I'm on a tab or I'm on a really long run with it, if I need access to a first aid kit, if I need access to spare socks, if I need access to my other boots because I've got wet, then I want them to be above my sleeping bag. If I need access to my sleeping bag on a 
route march or a run, then something's gone really, really wrong and I've got really, really lost and I'll have time to get the sleeping bag out. Does that make sense? Good. It also means the bag sits up now because I've put a strong base at the bottom that's spread out the bottom and it sits up nicely. So I'm just going to quickly talk about my first aid kit. Wherever the hell I've got the, my notes on top of it. So this is my first aid kit. I'm going to come round. Painkillers. I've also got in here some um, allergy tablets as well for hay fever. Um, I've got some alcohol gel to be able to clean my hands. And I've also packed some wound dressings as well. Some triage wound dressings. Um, I've got some plasters, blister plasters. I've got blister treatment, a spare batteries for the torch. That's all gone in here. I've also got a pair of scissors and it's all packed away carefully as well. So it's easily accessible. Nipple plasters because they're a killer if you get sore nipples. I've got a lighter for a cheeky fag, a screwdriver in case I need to do an A-team and repair a Jeep with a small Phillips head screwdriver. So that's my first aid kit. It's in this bag. This bag isn't waterproof. So what I was going to do is take my waterproof sleeping bag, put this inside that. Now that does one of two things now. That now makes it waterproof. So if my bag does leak, I don't lose all of the contents of my first aid kit. But it also means that that's really bright in my bag. So when looking for it, I just need to look for the blue box that's covered in blue waterproof bag and access it. Easy as that. Okay, reads notes. So the next thing that I need to pack is all of my spare clothes. Before this goes in, I need to pack my clothes. So I'm just going to get my clothes together and I'll show you. So the spare clothes I'm going to pack in, uh, I found a luminous carrier bag. So I'm going to take a towel. That's what's going to go in the bag. So I've got a towel there, standard towel. Uh, I have a layer, so a t-shirt. This is actually one of my training t-shirts, but it's also good for, you know, warmth. Um, pants and socks, you don't need to see that. I've got gloves to keep warm. I have a woolly hat to keep warm. Spare pair of trousers. So if I do get soaked, I've then got everything I need to dry off and then change. So again, orange bag, easily found if I need to access it. So that can go on top of the sleeping bag like that. And then to go on top of that, I'm supposed to take a spare pair of boots. Now, two things with this, I've ordered new boots. Part of the rules, I'm not allowed to wear trail trainers. I'm going to be training today in my trail trainers because I don't actually own walking boots. I've got a thing about walking boots. If you're doing anything over tough terrain, having a pair of really heavy walking boots that soak the water up and make your feet feel like you're walking on lead coffins, I'm not a fan of. I've worn them before. They're not things that I want on my feet. However, I have to wear them and I understand why the army wear them. So to keep it realistic, I've bought myself a pair of military lightweight boots. Even though I prefer trail trainers, I have bought a pair of military lightweight boots, but I don't have them yet. So what I am going to do is replicate carrying a spare pair with my dirty uh, trainers. So these are a pair of just running trainers that I'm going to stuff in for now. And then when my boots arrive, I'll be taking my trail trainers because if I need a pair in an emergency, then I've got them. So these are going to go in. Now, the way in which I'm putting these in are like this. Obviously, if I've got boots, then the head's going to come up here. So what I'm doing is I'm stuffing them in like this down the side. So it adds frame to the bag, fills the bag out, makes it easy accessible. OK, then once I've done that, I have a waterproof jacket. Again, needs to be easily accessible. First aid kit. So the first aid kit, I'm going to put to the front and stuff that in there. Okay, right. So then what I'm going to do now is my head torch. So I need a head torch. So I've got that there. So now that I've packed everything that I've packed so far, I now need to, I've got this waterproof bag, but I'm going to put my head torch in here. I don't actually own a small torch. I've got a big torch, but I don't actually own a small torch, which I need as backup for my uh, and my head torch. So I've bought one, but when it arrives, I'll put that in here as well. I have a spoon 
I have a emergency thermal blanket. So this is one of those things they put around you at marathons that serve no purpose after running a marathon, but will come in dead handy in emergency situations on top of mountains. So I'm going to put that in there. I've got an emergency light that I can just hang on a bag on, my, on the back of my bag, um, which emits light in the dark. So that's always handy to have. I'm going to put my anti-friction cream. I'm going to put in some talcum powder. And then any other emergency essentials, I'm also going to put in this bag. So this bag will be my kind of go, if it's not first aid, this will be my go-to get stuff out of bag. So I'm just going to quickly run through my lit. I'm going to come around here. Now that I've done that, I'm just going to quickly run through my list. So sleeping bag, check, underwear, check, socks, check, trousers, base layer and t-shirt, jacket, coat, check, waterproof jacket, check. Oh no, jacket and coat, bear with me. Thermal, cold weather, jacket. So that's going to go in at the top, in here, like this. There we go. So jacket, coat, waterproof jacket, in, done. Talcum powder, hats and gloves, in. Uh, towel in, lighter, emergency food. So I don't actually own any emergency food. These are the sort of um, you know army rations that you can add hot water to and they become a meal and you can survive off them. Loads of calories. They come in small packs. I'm going to buy some. I'm going to pack them. I don't have them at the moment, but I, I will pack food to eat on the run. So I'll take with me my soaring bars, my energy gels, the sort of things that I use when I go for long endurance runs, I'll take with me anyway, and they'll be around me on my body or in the side pockets. Torch and batteries, I still need to buy a torch, but I've got a head torch. Um, I also just need to pack some batteries. Uh, trail trainers, I'm gonna be wearing my trail trainers, but I have some simulation trainers in here that will kind of simulate where my boots will go, uh, or where my trail trainers will go when my boots arrive, because I'll be training in my boots. Some spare laces, I still need to buy spare laces. Um, my spoon's in there windproof jacket in there. Com so I'm going to wear, on a windy day, a windproof jacket. I'm going to wear my combat trousers that I'm wearing now, a baseball cap, thick socks, which I'm wearing, sunglasses, whatever, first aid kit done. Right, so things that I need to buy. So I need to buy an emergency bivvy. An emergency bivvy is like a bivvy bag thing that opens up into like a mini tent slash sleeping bag, slightly bigger so you can get your sleeping bag inside and it kind of does up around you. Waterproof adds thermal layer. So I need to buy one of them. Um, I need to buy a poncho, self-explanatory. I need to buy the canoe bags, which I've kind of used my sleeping bag bag and I've also used a smaller waterproof bag but if i buy canoe bags i can use them i need to buy some whistles emergency food rations i've already mentioned and spare laces now i am allowed five pounds of dead weight now this isn't dead weight this is practical use usable items that obviously add to the weight of the burger now instead of using actual dead weight i'm going to use water because then once this is full if this does catch a leak and bursts then i can I'm obviously not out of water. I still have the dead weight water that I can use. So I'm gonna fill this up now and I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna use this. This is gonna be a game changer. This bag is gonna save my shoulders from being destroyed. This is gonna save me from having to worry about hydration. I'll show you what I mean. So what I've done is I've filled this up with water. Now this is full um, and it's not leaking. So bonus, I've never used this before. So it's the first time. What I am gonna do is I'm gonna tie this off when I get my poncho, what I'll do is cover the top of the bag with the poncho and then the poncho will add another layer of waterproofing. As part of the dead weight is I'm going to add some water bottles. So I'm just going to put some of these in here like this. Three. Four. Let's see how I get on. Right, so I'm going to tie this off. Now, this is the way it works. Let me show you. So I'm going to tie this off. So that then clips on there like that, right? So then that's the top of my bag that makes it waterproof. This is the trick with this. So this then goes on here. Like this, that hangs down. I can then tie these straps on that come with the bag. These straps will then tie into the bag. That's then going to go over the top and then clip down into these. One, two, all right. So then I can pull at the back 
pull them down tight. The weight of the bag needs to be 35 pounds before I add my hydration. I'm allowed to use five pounds of dead weight, which is what I'm gonna try and use some of this for, but the actual hydration that I'm gonna be using can't be part of the 35 pounds. I need to take this off, weigh myself. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna weigh myself by standing on the scales of how much, I, I haven't got any other way of weighing it. So I'm gonna stand on the scales and weigh myself. Then I'm gonna stand on the scales with the backpack on and weigh myself doing that. Okay, so I'm gonna weigh myself on the scales. I weigh pretty much exactly what I weighed on my last weight. So I'm gonna just put it down as 98 kg and then I'm gonna get the bag. So 98 kg is, hang on, where's my phone? So 35 pounds, I don't know why I'm doing it in kg, my scales are in kg. So 35 pounds in kg is 15.9 kilograms. So say 16, so 98 plus 16 is 140 kg. So I need this. I am making this look hard. All right. So with this on my back, I need this to be 100, what did I say it was? 114, 114, come on. Okay, I'm 110, I need to add 4 kg. Now I will say for this run that I'm gonna to do today, this ruck, I am cheating because I am going over the five pounds of dead weight that I'm allowed. I'm gonna put these extra two, these are the obvious, easiest ways of having, of having the weight where it needs to be. I need to find other things as well to go in here. I am cheating. The reason why I'm not too bothered about using dead weight at the moment is because when I buy the extra gear, like the emergency rations, they weigh quite a bit and I can just have 10 of them packets in here because I'm allowed to have them. They're not classed as dead weight, so I can use them. I've then also got the emergency bivy and the poncho that's gonna add some weight. So that's the plan. Okay, I needed to get, let me just move this up a bit. Funny angle. So I needed to get to 114 kg for me to be dead on the minimum requirements to be able to complete this challenge. I am 13.7, so I'm 0.3 of a kg off. I've got loads of water in here. I've got a really uneven distribution of water at the top. So it is quite heavy at the top, which is good. I can already feel it's a massive difference on my shoulders. So but I need to go, um, I'm gonna put the water, I'm gonna put the hydration pack on the top of the bag now, and I need to go before it starts raining. When my poncho comes, the bivy and food rations, I'm easily gonna be over what the minimum requirements are. So I've got the bag on. This is the bag. So I've got just under 35 pounds, plus water, plus food that I'm gonna carry. That'll go in there, and then when I need it. Good, so I'm just gonna go out for my practice, my second ever tab. Tactical advance to battleground, let's go. <laughs> 